All right, so last section we're going to look at this week um, is 1.3. Um, we're just going to do kind of the first part of it. Um, we're going to look at the next part of it next academic week. So we're going to continue looking at equations where you have to combine like terms. Right? But one thing we didn't do yesterday is we never had variables on both sides. Okay? So we're going to look now at when you have variables on both sides, you've got choices now. Right? You know, remember how sometimes the variable is on the left and sometimes it's on the right? Well, now you get to choose what side you want to put it on. Right? So we try to avoid negatives. That's what we try to do. Okay? Doesn't mean you're always going to be able to. But if we can, um, we will, because negatives are harder to work with. Um, so can someone just remind me real quick, what were the, and you don't have to write this, just remind me, what was the <coughs> acronym to remember the steps? Patriot? Sam. Sam. So what are the, what's the S stand for? Simplify. 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 Two things you do under simplify. The first thing we're not going to have today. Distributive. distributive property. Yep. How do you know if you have distributive property just by looking quick? Like I can look at that quick and say, no, nope, no distributive property. Yep. Uh, James? See if it has like uh, uh, the brackets. Could have brackets. A lot of times, instead of brackets, we have. I mean, could, but I usually use. I'll usually put parentheses. Yeah. So distributive property is the first thing we look for. Um, what's after distributive property? How about um, Joe? What comes next? Um, so after the distributive property, the brackets are multiplying or dividing? Um, not quite. Look back. Do you have your notes from yesterday? Look back at under simplify. You don't have to. If you want to look back at your notes while we're doing this, you can. That's a good resource. Just go back and look. You don't have to have it memorized. You want to help them out? Yeah, go ahead, Jane. Uh, combine like terms. Combine like terms. Usually I'll just abbreviate CLT, combine like terms. All right, um, what's the next step? That's the A in SAM. We do our, yeah, add or subtract. nice. We do our adding or subtracting. How do you know which one to use? Well, you do the opposite, because now you're moving stuff from side to side. Um, and the M in SAM, what's the M stand for? Math. Math. Um, no, but that's a good guess. Yes? Multiply or divide? Multiply, <laughs> divide. Again, how do you know which one to use? You do the opposite. Okay? We went through all the cases, like if you've got a fraction next to a number, use the reciprocal. Okay, all, all that stuff. All right, so you guys already have this in your notes from yesterday. So, okay, right? you don't need to put it again. Oh, thank you. All right, let's take a look at example one. Okay, so what's different about this equation that we haven't done yet? Uh, Maya? There's like two different like, things on each side. Two, what do you mean two different? Like the, it says 2p plus 12 on one side and the other side 5p minus 9. Okay, so yeah, we've got the variable on each side. Now, we're going to solve this one twice. Okay? I'm going to show you whether you put the variables on the left or on the right. It doesn't matter. Um, probably after that, we'll just do it one way. Okay? But the first time, we'll, we'll do it both. Um, how about, um, let's see, uh, Kayla. What side do you want to put all the variables on? You want to put them all on the left or you want to put them on the right? Okay, we're going to put them on the left. So Kayla picked the left. That means this is going to go over here. Now, did you pick left for any reason? Just a nice word. Okay. I agree that I would put them on the left, but I have a really good reason why I would do that. Does anybody know why putting the variables on the left is going to make this problem easier. It's going to avoid something. Yep. 
12 by itself? Well, I want to get P by itself. I don't really care if the 12 is by itself right now, but there is something you can avoid by putting the variables on the left. It's not wrong if you do it on the right, and we're going to do it that way after. Negatives. Right, we can avoid negatives. Just how? Okay. Negatives on that side. So, what hap how do you move the 2p to the left? Subtract. Subtract how much? 2p. 2p. Subtract 2p. Subtract 2p. Um, wait, can you tell me what I'm going to get when I do that? You're going to get 0 and 3p. All right, so go ahead and read off the whole equation for me. 3p mm -hmm. minus 9 equals positive 12. Perfect. So look at what happened. 5p minus 2p, positive 3. Okay. So for now, we did a calculation, and we didn't get a negative. All right. Now, for my next step, do I have any more adding and subtracting, or am I going to go into multiply and divide? I still have more adding and subtracting. Okay, that's a little different. We normally do one adding and subtracting, and then you're done with that stuff. This has two. What else do I need to add or subtract here? How about um, Tristan? What else do I need to add or subtract? Yeah, what do you want to do with that? Add it to the other side. Nice. We're going to add, and we're going to add. And now, when we do that, we're going to do another calculation, and we're going to avoid a negative again. Uh, so, Patriot, what am I going to get now? Oh, uh, you're going to get 3p equals 21. Yep. Negative 9 plus 9 is 0. And 12 plus 9, perfect. You got 21. Now we're down to the kind of equations we did on Tuesday. One step. Whole number next to the variable. What do we do when you have a whole number next to the variable? How about um, Sophia? How do we get that 3 on the other side? So I need, a, I need an operation. Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Right. Careful, not minus. Divide, right? This is 3 times p, whole number attached to the variable. Divide by 3, divide by 3. <coughs> um, and we're going to get a nice answer. Um, how about uh, Julia? What do we get when we do 21 divided by 3? 7. Perfect. Okay. So when we solved it, where did the variable end up? On which side? Lucas? Right. Oh, excuse me. Left. Okay, variable ended up on the left. Now, let's do the same same problem. You've got plenty of room on this. There's a lot of space because there's not a lot of examples today. We're going to do the same thing again. But let's look at what happens if you decided to put the variable on the right. Okay? As long as you do it correctly, you should get the same answer. Right? So now we're getting into problems where some people might do it one way, some people might do it a different way. And that's, that's fine, as long as, as long as you showed your steps. I have a question. When you were moving to your coffee is there any kind of way you write that like, to show it through? So that's what the minus 2p and the minus 2p is. That's the subtraction that I did to move it to the left side. Is there a way to rewrite it or rewrite the whole problem with that? Like change? Well, um, I'm not sure what you mean. Like I rewrote it here after I subtracted? Before you rewrote it. Before you subtracted, you rewrite it. It's moving. So you started with 5p minus 9 equals 2p plus 12. And then you write what you're going to do on each side. Minus 2p minus 2p. That's all you can really write. There's, there's, um, there's nothing else to write before that step. 
All right? Okay, so let me take and let's let's do the same problem again. 5p minus 9. Wait, are we erasing what we can? Nope, you're not erasing anything. I ran out of space because I had to like. I write big. Write big? Yeah. Um, squeeze it. Squeeze it in somewhere. Um, so 5p minus 9 equals 2p plus 12. What could you do different for your first step? Still something with the p's, but something different than we did the first time. Yeah? Yeah. Let's bring the 5p over to the right. Um, Blake, how would I bring the 5p over to the right? Move it. Ha. Patriot. Um, addition. Well, is the 5p negative? Yeah. No. 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 Why is there a minus x with it? Because it's behind it. It's negative. What's that minus go with? Doesn't go with the 5p. That's subtraction. That minus goes with the... No. That goes with the not. So the 5p is positive. So what's the opposite? Negative. Yeah. So minus 5p. Minus 5p. 5p minus 5p cancels, um, out. cancels out. What's still on the left side? 3p. Uh, yes. 3cp. Uh, on the left side, PG? Negative. Yeah, nice. Negative 9. <laughs> now, what's going to happen with 2p minus 5p? That's going to be negative 3p. Now, we're not wrong. That's okay. But doing it this way, you're going to have to deal with negatives. Okay? So 2p minus 5p is negative 3p. Blake. Blake. Yeah. So negative 3p plus 12. Alright. What's my what's my next step? We decided to put all the numbers with letters on the right. So now we have to put all the numbers without letters on the left. Okay? So it's just the opposite of what we did. Um, how would we put the 12 over on the left? Yep. Subtract the 12. Good. Subtract 12. Subtract 12. Uh, um, see, now we can deal with all these negatives. But we're still going to get the same answer. What's negative 9 minus 12? Yep. Major. Negative 21. Yep. Negative 21. To me, that's hard, a little harder to do than 12 plus 9. I think more people are going to get 12 plus 9 right than negative 9 minus 12 because it's got negatives. But, Peter, you got it. Negative 21 equals negative 3p. What about plus 12 minus 12? Cancels out. That just cancels out. Okay. And my very last step about, um, let's see, um, Lily, how about my last step, what would I do? Um, you divide by negative three. Yep, divide by negative three, divide by negative three. Negative divided by negative gives me a positive. nice positive, and what's negative 21 divided by negative three? Positive seven. Positive seven. So, did it matter which way we did it? No. I prefer the way on the left because I can avoid negatives. Now, there might be some problems that no matter which way you do it, you're going to get negatives. You can't avoid it. Maybe the final answer comes out negative and that's just the way it is. Okay? <coughs> Any questions on that? All right. So. When we've solved equations so far, every problem we've done today in the notes, in the warm-up, all the problems we did in the notes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every single equation had how many answers? Like when I circled my final answer, one, right? Always had one answer. Some equations can have, well, how can I say it? Some equations don't have one answer. 
right? There's different things that can happen. So on your guided notes, it says it is possible that some equations have, and you're going to fill in no solution in the first blank. So that means you go to solve the equation and there's no answer. Okay. So what we'll have to do is just see well, what happens when there's no answer. Like something weird must happen because you're not going to get like x equals 2 or x equals 5. Something strange happens. So we'll look at what happens with that. And then what's the opposite of no number being a solution? Yeah? Multiple answers? Yeah, every number. Okay, so there's some equations where it's kind of weird, but no matter what number you plug in, it just always works. So the next part, well, for other equations, any number, I think that's what you want to put on the blank, any number is a solution. Okay, and there's actually a special name for that. If any single number is a solution to an equation, and we're going to write down what it's called in a second. So you're going to start with, if any number is a solution to an equation, the, and then I'm going to tell you the rest in a second. Yeah. That's how many solutions there are. Yep. Yeah? Infinite. Yep. Yeah? And the, what we usually say is when there's infinite solutions, we say <coughs> all numbers. Some people might say all real numbers. <coughs> Anyone ever heard of that before? All real numbers? You can say that. If you say all numbers, that's okay. I'm not really super picky in Algebra 1 about that. Um, later on, it's kind of important. But does anyone know what, what that kind of equation is called? It begins with an I. How about if I asked you, like, who you are? Who you are is your what? Identity. Identity right? So if any number is a solution to an equation, you already got that part written, the equation is called, or well, the equation is called an identity. identity. So what I would expect on the test is most equations are going to be like we've done up until now. I'm probably going to give you one equation that's an identity, and I'll give you one that's a no solution. Okay. I'm not going to give you a lot that are no solution, because then that gets frustrating. You keep trying to solve it, and you can't solve it. All right? So I don't expect more than one of, of each of these types. Okay. Does anybody else need to copy um, any of the underlying stuff down? Okay. So let's solve this equation. So similar to the first one, okay, you got variables on both sides, and we just have to decide what side we want to put all the variables on. How about um, Jane? Do you want to put all the x's on the left, or do you want to put them on the right? All right, let's put them on the left. So we're going to put this over here. Um, can somebody else tell me how you would move that 5x on the right over to the left? Yeah. Well, look at the 5x on the right. What kind of 5x is it? Negative. There's a negative sign in front of the 5x? Mm -hmm. No, where's the negative in front of? In front of the it's in front of the 3, so the negative goes with the 3. So the way you remember it is sign to the left. Sign to the left always goes with the number. So that negative and that 3 are, are together. What about the 5x? What kind of 5x is it? It's a positive. So how do we get rid of positive 5x? Minus, exactly. So we're going to move this 5x over to the other side. Minus it. Minus it. Now, this is where something weird is going to happen. Hey, watch this. 5x on the right. What's 5x minus 5x? Zero. Zero. It cancels out. Now look at the left. This has never happened before. 5x minus 5x again. How much is that? Zero. That cancels out. 
So if you look carefully, all the letters just disappeared. When all the letters disappear from your problem, the one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to be a no solution problem or any number is a solution. It's going to be one of those two. How do you know which? Let's keep going and see what happens in the next step. What's on the left hand side now? Four. What's on the right hand side? Four is negative three. Does four equal negative three? No. no. That means no solution. The way you know that it's no solution is you end up with something that's not true. This is not true. So, answer is no solution. Don't write this is not true. That's not the answer. The answer is no solution. Okay? So if you get like 5 equals 6, um, 12 equals negative 8, basically you get an equal sign and you get a different number on each side. That means no solution. You might be able to guess what's going to happen when it's not no solution. It's going to be very similar, but just a little different. So when it's an equation that has any number as a solution, it would be like 8 equals 8. Right. We'll see in the next one when it's any number, you're going to get like 8 equals 8, or 5 equals 5, or 3 equals 3. You'll get something like that. Yeah. But that's what happens when it's no solution. Right? Yeah. You cross out the equal sign. You don't have to. You, if you just write no solution, that's fine. <coughs> yep. And it kind of makes sense because if you look at the original problem, it said 5 times something plus 4 is the same as 5 times something minus 3. Well, I don't care what number you think of, but if you multiply it by 5 and add 4, and then you take that same number you're thinking of and multiply it by 5 and minus 3, it's never going to come out the same. That's like saying I could double a number and add 1, and then double a number and add 2 and get the same answer. No. Double something and add 1, and then double something and add 2. You're going to get different answers. They'll never come out the same. Right, so that's a no solution. Okay. Any question on that one? All right, let's try, let's try this one. Okay. So I'm gonna give you guys like maybe three or four minutes. Try this one on your own. Okay, it's got a few, it's got a lot of stuff going on in it. It's definitely got combining like terms. Actually, I see combining like terms in a few spots. So we gotta do that, and then after that we can solve it. Okay, just take a few minutes to try that, and then we'll um, we'll look at it together. Um, let's take a look. Okay, so first step here, um, we've got some like terms we need to combine. Um, can anybody tell me what are the like terms on the left? Kate? 3x negative 2x. 3x negative 2x. <coughs> All right, we'll deal with those in a second. How about my like terms on the... Right. Joe? 4x and negative 3x. Yep. Does it matter that they're not next to each other? No. They're still like terms, even if there's something between them. Um, all right. Let's start with the one on the left. The 5, we're just going to bring down. How about 3x minus 2x? That's going to give me, yep, 1x. Perfect. Do I have to put the 1 in front of the x? No, I don't have to. I can just leave it as x. Right. And then 4x minus 3x. That's also 1x. And plus 5, I'm just going to bring down. So what's going to end up being our last step is right now. Let's put all the x's on the same side. Okay. Where should, Patriot, where do you want to put the x's? Left or right? On the left. Yeah. See, it's not going to really matter. But let's put all the x's on the left. And how would you move that x to the left? Why did it become just x's on both sides? Because we combine like terms. 3x minus 2x gives you 1x. Oh, yeah. Yep. So we just combine like terms. 
Yep, good, good question. Um, how do I move that x on the right over to the left? Yeah. Well, is this x positive or negative? Positive. Positive. What's the opposite of that? Negative. Negative, right? Now when you're moving stuff across the equal sign, you have to do the opposite. So to put this over here, minus the x, minus the x. What's x take away x? Nothing. Nothing, right? Zero. That's what you want to happen. What if you accidentally did plus? What would x plus x be? Yes. That would be 2x. So if you look at it, you get 2x. You're going to be like, oh, wait a minute. I didn't want to get 2x. I wanted it to disappear. And x minus x makes it disappear. But look at the left side. What happens there? It disappears. disappears there. x minus x. So what am I left with? I'm left with 5 equals 5. At this point, you're done doing work. There's no more work to do. It's kind of like this point right here. You just have to write your answer. So this one is not a no solution. What's this one? Identity. It's called any solution. Any solution. Yep. So we, what you want to write down is all... So we need to write that on the test. If... Yeah. Did not do it like that like at all, but I still got You told me that when I had the right with it. You had, you had what? Um, six times. Well, you had the same thing on each side, right? Yeah. So as long as you ended up with the same thing on each side, you could have done it a little different. Oh, actually. Yeah. So remember the first problem I did, I did it a couple ways, and I said there's always other ways to do it. So if you did something a little different, you're not wrong. You just did it the other way. We're not doing it both ways anymore. I just picked one way. Well, actually, I asked you guys, you tell me. Um, so yeah, all numbers is the solution. If you got this far and you forget to write all numbers, it's almost like you didn't put the answer. It's like you did a bunch of work, but you didn't actually say, okay, what the answer is. So you wouldn't get full credit if you don't put all numbers. If you put all real numbers, that's okay too. Yeah, I'm not really picky about that. Any question on that one? All right, the last two I want you guys to try. Um, I'm going to fix the numbers on the second one. But just do this below example three. The first one is fine, so just do that one first. Um, let me fix the second one. Now try the, um, the second one once you finish the first one. Oh my god, it's been on the office. All right, so a couple people had um, trouble with number one. What's the first thing you could do to make the right-hand side a little simpler? Yeah? Yeah, combine like terms. You have a 2x. And then again, another question I had was, well, how can you combine these if there's no number in front of the x? What number is always there if you want to put it, if you don't see it? Yep. Yep. Good job. So the left-hand side, just keep it the same. And what's 2x plus 1x? 3x. 3x. Now, at this step, when you have variables on both sides, you want to put all the variables on the same side. Why is it plus 2? Plus, um, I'm sorry, plus one. Thank you. The other side is plus two. The right side is still plus one. Yep. All right. Now, um, how about, Aileen, where do you want to put the x's? On the left or the right? Okay. All right. So she said put all the x's over here. How would I move 3x to the other side? Remember, you're not dividing by three. You want to take this whole thing and move it to the other side. Joe? Yep. And what would you subtract? 3x. 
Yes. You want to subtract that entire thing. Okay, that number, if you're moving a term with x, the whole thing goes to the other side. Now, on the left, 3x minus 3x, gone. Look at the right. 3x minus 3x, gone. Copy down what you have left. What's on the left-hand side? 2. 2 equals, and what's on the right? 1. 1. Now, if you stop there, I'm going to give you half because you did the work, but you don't have an answer. What does 2 equals 1 mean? What is the answer? No solution. No solution. Yep, good. No solution. All right, and the second one. Okay. First thing we could do here, a um, couple people missed this step, or if they did it, they made a mistake on it. Yeah? Not yet. I do like the idea of subtracting the 4x, but I'm going to do that in the second step. Again, you can do things in a little bit different order, but I would. there's one thing I would do first. Um, yeah, Adriana? Yeah, combine like terms. Negative 5 plus 3. Okay. What does that come out to? Not quite. Negative 2. Right? If you owe someone $5, and then you add 3 to that, say, OK, well, I owed them 5, but then I paid them back 3. I still owe them 2. Negative 2. Negative is like you owe someone money. All right, now I'm going to do what uh, Mackenzie said. I'm going to put the 4x on the left. Now, is it going to cancel on both sides when I do this? Or just from one side? Just from one side. So this is like a problem we did earlier. It's not a no solution. It's not an all numbers. This is gone. What's 8x minus 4x? 4x. 4x minus 2. And what do I still have on the right? 6. Notice I still have letters in the problem. If I still have letters, it's not a no solution. Okay? The letters would have to all be gone right now. Okay. Um, so I have two steps left. Um, yeah, Joe? You um, add 2 to 6. I like it. I'm going to add 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is gone. Um, Gianna, what's on the left-hand side now that I got rid of that negative 2? Just the, just the 4x. And on the right, 6 plus 2 gives me 8. And now I'm down to my last step. And this is why I changed the numbers, because I wanted it to work out to a nice answer for you. Um, how about, um, yeah, go ahead, Mackenzie. Um, you divide 4 by 4, and then you divide by 4 by 8. Yep. Divide both sides by 4. And princess, what's 8 divided by 4? 2. 2. Nice. So we get x equals 2, and we are good. Any questions on that? OK, so a couple reminders. OK, the reference sheet. Okay, Tonight's homework is basically a reference sheet for the test tomorrow. You can use that on the test. Okay. You can't use your notebook, you can't use all your guided notes, but you can use the homework sheet that's on Google Classroom. So I'm going to give you guys some time to print that right now. That's, that's all you can use. I'll tell you which printer to use in that. First test is tomorrow, and what can you do to get the five points extra credit? Subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe, yep. Subscribe. I subscribe, sir. Subscribe. And I'll